Okay, welcome to the third episode of the Swingcast podcast. My name is Dr. Scott Lynn. I'm the research director for Swing Catalyst, and today we're here with Eric Bloomquist from Helmstead, Sweden. How are you doing, Eric? I'm doing good, Scott. How are you doing? Awesome. I'm doing great, thank you. So Eric is the founder of Balance Golf uh, that has five sites across Sweden, five different uh, facilities across Sweden that's helping tons of golfers there. And I know Swedish are a very avid golfing population. Uh, I was at your facility there in Helmstead. I think it was in March of a year ago. Um, it was barely above yeah. zero Celsius, and the golf course was packed. So they're, they're a very hardy bunch of golfers there, and you're doing your best to help as many of them as you can. I'm doing our, we're doing our best. We're working together as a team, and we are 12 uh, golf developers, as we call ourselves. And uh, we work, we're trying to help each other out to get, to get the best of everyone, so to speak. So we, we share a lot of knowledge and uh, inspiration motivation and trying to help each other out as much as possible that's awesome and i also think eric's a very unique golf teacher because he also has a degree in kinesiology so i studied a lot of kinesiology uh, i did an undergraduate master's and phd in kinesiology and i think one of the very important points that you've made to me in the past is that as golf teachers we don't just want to help people hit it better we need to make sure that that motion is safe for them so they don't get injured because we know a lot of our golfers are getting knee and back and hip and a whole bunch of different issues that's going to prevent them from playing the game and so we want to make sure that we understand the kinesiology of the body as well and i think that's where you really excel you know you say something really important there scott i think i think the screening and the, and the setup for everyone is so individually so um what we do is that we measure everyone that comes in uh, we don't try to to uh, to just uh, let's do this and hope for the best right. and um therefore with the 3D motion plate and all these cameras that we have and using and also our launch monitor um, can help us to do a much better job. Uh, yeah. I think this is so important because you don't do anything like for, for instance, just short, um, with a car. You don't make a chance with a car. Today you go into and look in the computer and measure everything and I think I think that's the next part of golf teaching. Exactly. Golf a lot of times we, in the past we've tried to fit everybody into the same model. So we thought the ideal swing should be this and we tried to fit everybody into that. And I think, like you say, we need to screen people and figure out what kind of swing move is going to work for each person and it's going to be the safest and most effective swing for them. So that's really good information. So Eric's one of our longest users. He's had a swing catalyst plate for approximately six years or so. So he's been collecting a lot of swings and using it quite a bit. Um, and so he's going to show us a little bit of some stuff he's been working on on the Swing Catalyst plate now. So let's get you to just spin your computer around there. All right. I hope you have to, to help me out and see if it's good enough. Sure. Okay, just give it a sec here. Let it... Uh... You see it? Yeah, just lower it down. You hear me now? Yeah, we're good. Perfect. And so one thing that's really interesting here is that... Uh, Eric has four cameras in his facility all synced together with the pressure and force information. So if you just show there, you could see he has a face on view, a view from behind, a view down the line and a view above. So we have several different views um, that allow him to see the swing from various angles. And that's one thing that the Swing Catalyst software allows us to do. Um, and so we have a, a gentleman here. Just tell us about what happens here with this uh, with this swing. I think it's a pre swing on the left and a post on the right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, we're gonna start with uh, the front view here, and uh, what we, what I saw in his swing is that if you go through all these joints, I saw his foot. We call it locked in Sweden. Okay. Um, uh, we measured his internal rotation of the left hip and both right and left to see what he could do yeah. with his body, and um, we figured out that this foot needs to turn out and. Um, those degrees, what he was, his body was allowing him to do that, to do so. Um, the result is that he carried the ball 119 before, 119 meters, yeah. and now he was up to 141. Wow. Um, of course, this was this was a great shot, but the potential when you do that over and over again and have this awareness from your brain to your muscles, that helps you just let it loose. So. You see the swing here on the left. We see him on the force plate. Good trace uh, with the, but it's it's a lot of swings with his arms. Mm -hmm. And now with the same club, 15 minutes later, when we measured, I measured all these forces for both horizontal 
and torque and uh, vertical yeah. increased it by so much uh, because now his rotation, uh, a full body rotation through the ball. Good. Can you show the torque graph? Let's see what, how, how that changed between the two. Because what we find generally is when you externally rotate your foot like that, that allows you to rotate much better and produce those rotational forces on the ground. So it's a little blurry here. Can you tell us the peak uh, rotational? Yeah. The peak uh, is uh, 103 on the left one yeah. and 10 on the right one. Perfect. That's awesome. So again, that's one thing that um, we found quite a bit. If you want to increase that torque or that rotational force, if you determine that's something that your players need more of, rotating or turning that lead foot or flaring that lead foot towards the target really allows them to open up that hip and create a lot more uh, rotational forces. That's awesome. And in this, per per this case, he, he definitely needed that, um, which allowed him to carry it more than 20 meters further. So for our uh, people who work in yards, how, how many yards is that? That's about... Uh, yeah, so it's actually more than 20 meters. It's around 30 yards. 30 yards. Wow. A 30-yard extra carry. And what club is he hitting there? That'd be a mid-iron, 7-iron, 8-iron? Oh, yeah. 7-iron. So wow. That's amazing. Oh, right. So, so that is, is a really important point to make. Um, the rotational forces or the torque, adjusting the flare in the lead foot can really help us and especially if our, our clients have re restricted internal rotation of that lead hip, um, that, that will really allow them to turn through the ball a lot better. Yeah, you know, Scott, but I, I think it's important. I'm so glad that we have the 3D measurements here at Ringenes uh, because then I know which forces that I can work on. Right. So uh, if it's vertical or... I, I know that you've been talking a lot about this, but you know, this linear force, what we call horizontal force. Yeah. To increase that sometimes, some people have walked away from it. We call it sway, but it is so important for the clean hit, I think. Yeah. Exactly. Don't you agree? Or and the, it oh. has to be the one that, that comes first as well. So the, the kinetic sequence is something that's super important in terms of uh, which forces happen at what time. And so... Um, yeah, that person clearly had to increase their torque to hit it further and you, you allowed them to do that with a simple setup modification, which I think is, is a really great way of teaching because it, it's not something they have to think about. They just set their foot where it is at the start and they just mm -hmm. try to be athletic after that. So that's really great. And so now we have another woman here um, and this is a really cool swing. We were talking about this one earlier um, because we've started to tell people that your goal as a golf teacher is not always to maximize every single force. Um, so I think a lot of people have tried to just make the linear rotational and vertical forces larger and assume that would make them hit it better. Um, mm -hmm. That's not always the case. So tell us a little bit more about this lady. Yeah, this is Susan. She, uh, she, she is really an explosive uh, uh, swing. She, has, um, she, she can hit the ball really far, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly when she came in, she, she was topping the ball over and over again. Okay. And... You, you can, as a teacher, if you don't know the forces, you can stand here forever. Yeah. But you can see here now, this is what she felt was a chip chop. Wow. And she comes up to 214%. Vertical force. That's, vertical. that's a lot of vertical force. And, and you can imagine that that's going to raise her up a little bit. And if that's not what her body's designed to do. So we have a lot of screens that we've worked on with Mike Adams to try to determine what forces are optimal for each person. And... And clearly that massive amount of vertical force was not optimal for her. And, and this is a really rare case because in, in a lot of people were trying to add vertical forces. I think a lot of people have yeah. been taught to not use vertical forces appropriately. But this girl was the complete opposite of that. So that's really cool. And so uh, go to the, the post swing here and let's see. Um, so you got her working on some drills to try to almost reduce that vertical force to kind of keep her down through the shot um, to make sure she wasn't topping it quite as much. Yes. Uh, I can... Put it right there okay. now, uh, and we we what we did is that I wanted to decrease the this vertical force and get control and um, just listen to her body and what she felt that she wanted to to swing the club. So we did an easy exercise, more of a chip shot, just in control of her forces, mm -hmm. and now she was hitting the ball every single time, and that's because. It's like, you know, you change a little bit from um, the, the forces and that goes so quick. This is 15 minutes in between because my lesson today is 25 minutes. So it's, it's short and fast and 
now I know what's going on. It's so easy to go in. I don't need to change the whole swing. I just need to know the forces. Perfect. That's a really great point. So I think that's an important point to make is that um, our goal is not always to maximize every single fourth. I think some people have, have talked about that in the past. And um, I think we need to understand what people need, which forces. And that, that's really awesome. So in that particular person, you had to decrease the vertical force to get her to hit it more solidly. So that's some really oh. great work. Um, and so we are going to be going through a lot of this stuff, a lot of the screens and, and a lot of the stuff of how we use the plate with Bernie Nadar at your place. Again, August 4th and 5th. Uh, the fourth is going to be a purely lecture day. So we're going to go through all the lecture of the level two seminar. Bernie will give a lecture about how he uses the plate to help his players. Um, and then the fifth will be a pure practical day. So we're just going to get people hitting yeah. shots on the plate. We're going to be talking about the swings and working through the forces and trying to understand it to allow people to to get these ground reaction forces a lot better and understand how to use them to make people hit it better. I just want to say something uh, to my Swedish college and all around Norway and Poland and, and Denmark and Finland who, who wants to join in because this is a great, great opportunity to get the best of the world. I, I met you a couple of times now, Scott, and I had so much great time in Orlando with ambassadors to, to share the knowledge and to understand so much more. Um, it's, it's not all about the position, it, it's more, it's so much more. Right. And um, I really, really looking forward to this course on 5th of August. So please welcome to Ringenes Golf and Country Club here. And, uh, and uh, I'd love to, to, to have you here now. And we're gonna have some great talk. Awesome, thank you so much, Eric. And I look forward to seeing you in about a week or so. Over and out. All right, take care, man. Take care, bye.